one of the things that God has designed to happen from this conference is a financial resources revival. Lay up gold like dust. Take your seat. I mean, I can see people filling their forms. In case you haven't done that very well, get it done very sharply. And then I'll just say one or two things about the financial resources. Very massive resources flow. Until money practically loses value. Father, we give you the praise. I want you to write down 10 keys. And these keys, I'm, I, I'm talking with the mind of talking to pastors, but it's going to apply to everyone. Seven keys to financial resources revival. Haggai chapter 2, verse 9, all the way to verse 10. Start from verse 6. It said, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory see the Lord of hosts the silver is mine and the gold is mine see the Lord of hosts the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give shalom, will I give prosperity, will I give wealth, nothing broken or missing, saith the Lord of hosts. In this end time revival, what is your key to financial resources? Number one. Make God your pursuit above every other pursuit. Make God your pursuit above every other pursuit. Because his glory he won't share with another above every other pursuit. Number two. Make the purpose of God become your personal purpose. Let what God wants become what you want. Make God's purpose become your personal purpose. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. I was talking to someone the other day. And I told him I don't have any assignment in this world. Other than crusades church planting, and every other thing, anything that will make those happen. I'm not looking to build a house. I'm not looking for a house. I'm not looking for a car to drive. I don't know the last time I bought a car. <laughs> cars, most cars that I drive are cars that came. I'm not looking for cloth to wear. <laughs> you give me one billion now, it will perish on crusade. <laughs> it will lay down his life for church planting. 
Are you following what I'm saying? Like, even one shoe, I won't buy out of it. One shoe, I won't buy out of it. So, it keeps coming. Make God's purpose become your purpose, your personal purpose. Number three, never look up to man. Pastor, church member, businessman, whoever you are, never look up to man. When you look up to man, you, you are looking away from resources, from good. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5. Thus said the Lord, cost is the man that trusted in man and maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh. But shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness, in the salt land, and not inhabited. Don't ever let any big man in church pocket your ministry. Respect everybody. But never allow anybody to be called a sponsor of, of, your, of the ministry. Never allow anybody to, to be called a major financier of the ministry. You, 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 you just lose relevance. And as it is for a church pastor, so it is for an individual. Abraham said in Genesis chapter 14, verse 21, 22, he said, And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods of thyself. And Abraham said unto the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. That I will not take from a, a tread even to a shoe lash it. And that I will not take anything that is thine. Lest thou should say I have made Abraham rich. I'm not looking up to you. Never look up to man. Number four. Don't embark on what God has not commanded. On what God has not commanded. Personal man, ministry, what God has not commanded. In Exodus chapter 35, verse 29, Exodus 35 and in verse 29, the children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded. God put the place on the people the spirit of sacrifice. To bring to us what he has commanded. Don't be involved in competition. Don't do things because you see your friend in ministry doing them. Don't do things because you see your colleague in ministry doing them. Don't do things because you feel like, I am even better than this man. But he see how he is succeeding. He has a television station. He has this and he has that. Don't turn back on what God has not commanded. Because the budget of God only covers the project of God. God only budgets for his projects. Anything that you do that is outside his project is outside his budget. And as it is for an, a, 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 a ministry, so it is for an individual. You want to invest, find out does God want to, you to put your money there? Not every line of business is your line. Don't turn back on what God has not commanded. Number five, anybody getting anything here, say amen. Anybody getting anything here, shout the Lord and say amen. Number five, be faithful, be accountable. Be faithful, be accountable. Be faithful, be accountable. Proverbs chapter 28 and in verse 20. Proverbs 28 and in verse 20. He said, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. 
But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be accountable. Pastor, if you raise an offering for something, let it be used for that thing. You don't raise an offering or take an offering in church for something for, for one thing and use it for another thing. Also, let it be clear to the people that you are faithful and you are accountable. As a pastor, I don't have one single checkbook of this church in my possession. Church ministry check is in, in, in the custody of the accounts department. Personal checks is even in the custody of my wife. I can't sign any money at will at any time. There are processes and checks where this is going and what this is going for. Very important. Proverbs 28, 20. We just read that. The faithful man will abound. If you are not faithful, God will never entrust you with anything. And as a person, as an individual, be faithful, be accountable. Be faithful to God. Don't be involved in anything that is crooked. Business deals that are crooked. That was number five. Was that number five? Number five. Number six. Don't mix up ministry resources with personal resources. Don't mix them. What belongs to the church is not the pastor's own. Second, First Chronicles 29 verse 1 to 3. I'm telling you what God will see in order to give you the blessing. Furthermore, David, the young, the kings, furthermore, the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now I have prepared with, my, with all my might for the house of my God, the gold for the things to be made in gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and the brass for the things of brass, the iron for the things of iron, and so forth and so on. Now verse 3. He said, Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of my own proper good. Gold. My proper good. My personal resources. One translation said. So David recognized what was his personal resources separate from church resources. When people bring an offering and they say, this is for God. Don't pocket it. If it is yours, they will tell you. If it is not yours and they say this is for God, direct it to where it should go. Because God is watching all these things. You don't mix it. Let there be that demarcation. Where there is no order, there can be no progress. Where there is no financial order, there can be no financial wonder. Because the church money is not yours. Now, even for those who have business and the business is yours, still order it. Yes, we know the whole business is yours. But let the business capital be different from expendable resources that you can spend so that the business can grow. You can place yourself on a salary. You don't dip your hand into the, the capital for the business and use it to meet personal needs, use it to meet relationships, relations needs and expect to reach anywhere. Let there be a, de a demarcation between what belongs to you as a person and what belongs to what you do. Number, number six, the seven now. Number seven, possess the vision for supernatural supply. What you see, what you can see is what God will give. Genesis 13 and verse 15. God spoke to Abraham. He said, all the land which thou seest I will give you. Proverbs 4.23. The Bible said, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. I'd like you to see yourself with abundance of resources. Just picture yourself in the realm of, 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 of affluence. That is necessary for the kingdom. Just see it. 
Delete the picture of scarcity and shortage and poverty from your life. And you can do that with point number eight. And point number eight says, possess the revelation of supernatural supply. The revelation from the word of God. The revelation from the word of God. Let the word of God show you what is yours. How much resources you can access. Let the word of God show you what is yours. Because the things that are revealed, they belong to us. Deuteronomy 29 and in verse 29. Hallelujah. And you use that to, to wipe your mind. When I saw scripture that says, I will fill this house with gold. I asked myself, I said, if God should fill this building with gold, how long will it take for us to spend it? Supernatural. Abundance. Number nine. Avoid the lifestyle of waste. Everyone who is a waster will never experience the resources of God. Avoid the lifestyle of waste. We saw the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, I believe from verse 10. Where the Bible talks about a certain man. Alright, move, 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 move forward. Move downward. Luke 15. Keep going to verse, let's, let's see verse 14. He went and joined and when he had spent all talking about the prodigal son, he wasted his substance on riotous living, the previous verse. And then he began to be in want. I like you to ensure that everything wasting around you is arrested. When there is a need, some time ago, we did something called Operation Operation Eliminate waste, something like that. Right here. Where there are scraps of things to sell off, sell them off. Where there are things that need to be turned into resources, do that. Let God see that you are a, a prudent resources manager. Ensure you do that. Avoid waste so you can establish wealth. Number 10. Did I say I'll give 10? Number 10, avoid the ownership mentality of ministry. Ownership mentality. You don't own the church. Matthew chapter 16 verse 17. And Jesus answered, blessed are, are thou Simon by Jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my father which is in heaven. And I say unto, also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. So it is God who builds his church. It is only when it is his church that he will build it. Matthew 16, 17 and 18. If it is your church, you will build it. If it is his church, he will build it. So ensure that in the eyes of God and in your eyes. And in the eyes of everybody watching. The church belongs to God. Now for those of us in business, when we say avoid ownership mentality, what it translates to you is enter into partnership with God. Let God be a partner in what you do. Don't just own it. Lord, I involve you in this business. You are the major shareholder of this business. I want you to own it and let me partner with you. I've seen Christians who, do, who did that. And the level of explosion they saw. That was point number 10. Right? Permit me to add two more. Number 11. Walk consistently in the covenant of supernatural supply. Walk consistently in the covenant of supernatural supply. What is the covenant of supernatural supply? 
as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Genesis 8, 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. As an individual, you are a tight, a pastor, you tight. You don't just receive tight from members, you tight. The church tights. This church tights. For 20 something years now. In fact, our level in tightening has shifted. It's beyond 10% right now. Am I communicating? Otherwise, we won't be able to handle anything here. What we pay for power. If you go around these premises, you can see all the lights everywhere. The sound and everything. What we pay for power every month can build a church. Every month you have built a, build a, a building. Every month you have a big church. Hallelujah. Work consistently as an individual. Don't play with your tithing and your giving. Now, I was telling someone the other day, I said, I do not preach the, the covenant of supernatural supply because I read it or somebody taught me. I saw it in the scripture and I practiced it 30 something years ago from the high institution. I wasn't doing it because I was going to be a preacher. I was doing it because I was a Christian and I saw the results. Walk consistently in the covenant. And number 12, be tirelessly grateful for what you see. Tirelessly grateful. To be grateful is to be fruitful. Jesus saw five loaves and two fishes in John chapter 6 verse 11. He lifted them up and gave thanks and it multiplied. Appreciation will bring multiplication. Don't compare yourself with other people. You don't know the full story of, your, of other people. When we were growing in ministry, some were taking loan from bank and doing many things. And we thought that it was the blessing that was coming. It was when they, they began to look for them and look for the monies they borrowed on loan that we knew it wasn't, it was, um, they assisted themselves. Hallelujah. Appreciation will bring multiplication. Run with those 12 points. We told our church people, we said, never you say no money. There is always money. We told them, ensure that appreciation surrounds everything we do. And I believe that we shall be blessed. Now take it from number one. Let's all read it one to go. Number one, make God your pursuit above every other pursuit. Two, make the purpose of God become your personal purpose. Three, never look up to man. Four, don't embark on what God has not commanded. Five, be faithful, be accountable. Six, don't mix up ministry resources with personal resources. Seven, possess the vision for supernatural supply. Eight, I'm not hearing you. For the word for supernatural supply. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Stand up on your feet if you receive that.